HydroLab multi-parameter SOMs utilize directly integrated in vivo submersible fluorescent sensors that are manufactured by Turner Designs. Optical configurations for phytoplankton sensors include in vivo chlorophyll A, phycocyanin, and phycoerythrin, and current housing options are available for stainless steel or titanium, where the titanium option is used for long-term deployments in saline environments. The Turner sensors integrated on the HydroLab SOMs feature high-quality signal processing circuitry and high-quality optical components within the sensor design. These design features lead to a sensor platform with excellent low-end detection limits, rapid response rates, and a wide dynamic range. Pictured in this slide is a simple diagram of the fluorescence process as well as a general illustration of how the in vivo fluorescence sensors on HydroLab SOMs work using in vivo chlorophyll A as an example. Fluorescence is defined as the emission of light by a substance that has absorbed light of a different wavelength. Within the topic of in vivo phytoplankton measurements, the pigments chlorophyll A, phycocyanin, and phycoerythrin all happen to be fluorescent molecules. The fluorescence wavelength properties of these pigments are what determines the optical configuration design of in vivo fluorescence sensors. In the case of the in vivo chlorophyll A sensor, a light source is paired with an excitation filter to allow a broad set of light wavelengths with a peak at 430 nanometers to shine from one of the sensor eyes to illuminate the sample area with blue light. If phytoplankton containing chlorophyll A happen to be in the measurement area during this illumination, electrons from within the chlorophyll A pigment will jump to a higher orbital and then back down to a ground state where excess energy is released in the form of a fluorescent light emission. An emission filter located behind the other eye of the sensor selectively allows only wavelengths between 660 nanometers to 710 nanometers to pass through to a detector. From there, the high-quality internal circuitry filters out noise and outputs a high-quality fluorescent signal of the targeted analyte. Excitation and emission wavelengths for the three in vivo phytoplankton sensors on the HydroLab are shown on this slide. Per the previous slide, the in vivo chlorophyll A excitation has a peak at 430 nanometers with an emission at 660 nanometers to 710 nanometers. Phycocyanin has an excitation peak at 595 nanometers and has an emission filter that allows wavelengths beyond 645 nanometers to pass. Phycoerythrin has an excitation peak at 540 nanometers and has an emission at 570 nanometers to 580 nanometers. In vivo fluorescent sensors on HydroLab SONs require a two-point calibration. The first point is a blank, which is typically deionized water or sample water filtered to be free of phytoplankton content. The second point is a primary standard, which is actually a representative grab sample from the water body being monitored. Primary standard grab samples are first measured with HydroLab SONs to determine the baseline in vivo signal. Grab samples are then analyzed with laboratory methods to determine actual concentration, such as in micrograms per liter or cells per milliliter. Correlations between baseline and vivo signal and laboratory measurements are then used for sensor calibration. Secondary standards, such as the adjustable solid secondary standard pictured on the right, can be used for calibration assistance as well as for checking for sensor drift. It is important to note that secondary standards are not primary standards as they are not the actual target analyte. Per the previous slide, true primary standards are made from actual representative grab samples in the field that are quantitatively analyzed in the laboratory. However, once primary standard values are quantitatively determined, secondary standard values can be directly correlated to these primary standard values, making them a handy tool for future calibration use and for sensor drift checks. The Hawk HydroMet website offers multiple step-by-step -step calibration videos for the in vivo fluorescent sensors, including steps to take if using a secondary standard as a calibration reference tool. The graph in the lower right shows example continuous in vivo chlorophyll A fluorescence data over two and a half weeks in late summer, early fall, with data taken at five minute intervals. Even without units on the graph, it is easy to see 24 hour daily trends and general seasonal trends, even if just monitoring RFUs, which is an acronym that stands for Relative Fluorescence Units. If quantitative units are desired on the x-axis, occasional grab samples need to be taken for quantitative laboratory analysis 
to go along with your in vivo fluorescence data set. Once quantitative data has been generated, it is then possible to set up correlations between your in vivo and extracted data sets. Other in vivo data points can then be converted to estimated microgram per liter or cells per milliliter values through the use of a correlation coefficient. Frequent laboratory analysis of grab samples also helps to make overall data more accurate as there are inherent in vivo measurement variables that can affect fluorescence readings. The last topic I would like to address is to outline some notable variables that can affect readings from in vivo fluorescence sensors. These include the environmental variables of water temperature and water quality, the phytoplankton variables of phytoplankton health and light history, and finally, the sensor variables of quenching and biological fouling. Environmental variables include water temperature and water quality. In regards to water temperature, there is little published information in the scientific community on the applicability of temperature compensation for in vivo phytoplankton fluorescence but it is known that there is a slight inverse linear relationship between temperature and in vivo chlorophyll A. A common approximation of the inverse linear relationship is 1.4% per degree Celsius. However, this percentage can be subject to variation with different species of phytoplankton. As all hydrolapsons include temperature sensors, the data needed for making an optional correction is automatically captured. In regards to water quality, any water quality parameter that can affect the optical characteristics of the measurement area can potentially influence the readings taken by a fluorescent sensor. If turbidity appears to be an influencing parameter, gathering data on this parameter along with simultaneous in vivo fluorescence and extracted data can enable statistical correction. Hawk hydromet tech support can assist further on this if you have questions. If dissolved organics appear to be influencing in vivo fluorescence values, Using sample blanks filtered to phytoplankton can help to identify the amount of background signal caused by the dissolved organics free of phytoplankton content. Phytoplankton variables include phytoplankton health and light history. In regards to phytoplankton health, healthy phytoplankton cells fluoresce less than dying cells and are also more efficient at photosynthesis. Nothing can really be done about this variable as it is just an inherent variable associated with the measurement of living cells that have different life stages. This variable is one that tends to average out, but is still good to be aware of. Another notable phytoplankton variable is light history. Phytoplankton saturated with light or with little access to light fluoresce less than phytoplankton that receive a steady influx of light. Some scientists that seek the best possible data actually sample at night or take measures to dark adapt their samples using opaque tubing, containers, and flow cells. Otherwise, taking occasional grab samples for laboratory quantification along with in vivo sampling is the most common method to minimize this light history variable of living phytoplankton cells. Finally, there are a couple key sensor variables to be aware of which include quenching and biofouling. Quenching refers to a point where the analyte concentration is so high that excitation light from the sensor is not able to completely pass into the measurement area and emitted light from the fluorophore is not able to completely be detected by the sensor detector. For in vivo chlorophyll A, this quenching concentration is roughly at around 500 micrograms per liter. To determine if quenching is an issue, grab samples can be measured with an in vivo fluorescence sensor and then measured again at a known dilution. If a 50% dilution yields an in vivo fluorescence signal that is also half of the original, then you will know that you are within the linear range. Otherwise, it is possible that you may be operating out of the linear range if the dilution to fluorescence correlation does not match up. Sensor biofouling is actually more of a combination of sensor and environmental variable as it pertains to the growth of biological organisms or films on the active measuring surfaces of the in vivo sensors. Hydrolab sons offer automatic wipers that mechanically wipe away biological fouling and anti-fouling accessories are also available to minimize sensor biofouling effects. This concludes our webinar. We'd like to thank you for viewing. For more information, please contact Hawk Hydromet Technical Support. Thank you.